Hey guys, Tony here. Um, I've had a few questions on how do you make railway crossing lights alternately flash? That means go ding, ding, ding like that. Um, very, it's actually very easy to do. Um, all you need is a flasher relay, an automotive flasher relay, and then you need an automotive relay that has a normally open and normally closed contact. So. I've got the circuit diagram here. So, as you can see here, I'm just going to pause for a while so you guys have time to have a look. You've got your positive side and your negative side. So, your negative side, for starters, splits off and goes to the negative side of both your um, crossing lights here. Your positive side goes down and then it goes to the positive which is on the flasher relay. So this is your flasher relay here. Okay. You also have your negative go that way and then onto the negative side of your flasher relay. Now this is the, the part people find tricky as well. Is that your negative also goes to the negative side of your... Um, coil for your other relay. Now on the flasher relay you've got a negative, a positive and an L which stands for load. Your load connector will then go down onto the positive side of the coil for your other relay. That's the relay with your normally open and normally closed contacts. Then your positive line from your power supply also carries on and it goes to the relay's um, common contact, which is the contact that actually does the moving. Now, you got your normally open, normally closed side here. Now, your normally open goes down here to one light. Your normally closed goes up here along and then to the other light. Now, what happens when this is all connected? This flasher relay will turn the coil off and on, off, on, off, on, like it does with the indicator light on a car. That will make that co um, contact there swap between the two lights and power one at a time alternately. This is the setup here. The re flasher relay here I've used is a um, adjustable one, so you can adjust the speed. Now that's because railway crossing lights flash at a slightly different speed to the... Um, to the indicators on a car. So as you can see here, you've got your negative here, you've got a negative here which goes to both of these relays, so that goes to the coil. You've got your power supply positive here, which goes to the um, positive side of your flash relay. You've got your load wire here, which goes to the coil of this relay here. And then you've got another power supply, which goes to the common on the um, on this relay here. Then you've got one light, two light, which is your normally open, normally closed contacts. Right, so we'll power this up so you guys can see how it works. You can see how, if I adjust it, you can, you know, if you run into it to be really slow, or if you want to go into fast forward, you can do it like this, just like that. Yep, yeah, it looks, oh, yep, works really good. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much, you can see this relay is switching off, on, off, on, off, on, and this relay here is swapping between the two lights. Um, so it's really easy to do, it's a bit of a circuit, um, you know, I'm, I'm electrically minded so it's going to be a bit hard for me to um, make it simple, so simple, because to me this is an easy circuit. So I'm restoring a railway crossing light at the moment, so um, yeah. But that's, that's how you do it. So if you wanted it really slow. See I generally have it about that speed. Yeah. And then you've got your um, railway crossing bell. Now that there just connects straight up to your power supply. Or you can go via a switch if you just wanted the lights to go separately. Um, so it's very important with these um, railway crossing bells. They're diode protected, 
um, and I'll, I'll explain that to you as well. Let's turn these blinding little buggers off. Um, that there is a diode. Now it's connected up in reverse along with your power supply. Now every time these contacts open, it makes a um, high voltage kick, which can go back through your line and um, damage your control equipment. So that's why they have that diode in there. Now because that diode's in there, it's important you get your negative and positive around the wrong, uh, the right way. Because what will happen is if you get them around the wrong way, it'll be like a dead short. Yeah. So how the bell works. Most, most of you railway guys will know how a bell works, but for the ones who don't. So what happens is you put your power on here, charge of this coil. Now this coil is an electromagnet, so it'll draw this iron core over to it. Now when it does so, it opens the, uh, um, this contact, which lets it go again. So it's just a cycle. Yeah. So that, yep, it's very easily um, easy to do. It's an easy circuit. Um, so what I'll do is I'll bring it up to the light a bit. So then if you guys want to have a look. Um, here it is there. Anyone can copy it, it doesn't worry me, I'm only doing this just to help anyone out who needs helping out doing this. See? It's not even my circuit anyway, so it's not up to me, see? Yeah. Although, it's, yeah, I thought it out, but I bet you other people would fall out the same circuit as well. So, yep, that's it there. So when your invisible train comes along... <sighs> Oh, you might find the lights are a little bit further apart than that normally. Yeah. And then guys, well that's us, so um, any questions, fire away in the comments below. So, see you guys.